some days things just go side. So the only issue here, non-issue, issue, whatever, my drills were at the other building. You got a dilemma here. I just feel defeated. Well, this has turned into kind of a shit show. This is gonna be the longest bar swap video ever. Well, the next order of business on this bike is going to be addressing the handlebars and the mirrors, also the grips. But I've never been much of a fan of stock mirrors on basically anything. Uh, they're stock, they have to meet certain requirements for the manufacturers and stuff like that. So I understand why they look the way they look, but of course, you know, I like to change stuff. So the idea here is to get the mirrors off of the kind of pedestal mounts, and we're going to go with a set of bar end mirrors. So. The handlebars are currently in the mail. They will be here very soon, along with the grips and the actual clamps that we're gonna use. But for now, I need to show you guys the mirrors I plan to use and kind of why I went with them. Now for the mirrors, I chose these Oberons. Probably won't be able to see them. So I recently used these on a CX500 build and I really like the way they clamp on. I like the dimensions and I like how you adjust them. They stay, they stay in place very well. So, they are a little bit expensive, but I feel they're worth it. So this is a nice billet mirror. You can get these things in either black anodized or just kind of a uh, raw aluminum finish or whatever. They're about three inch in overall diameter. So they're pretty short and they come with their own mounting system. So they're a bit expensive, but again, they're really high quality. I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that. And the reason I'm going with these specifically is because it's actually a little bit of a cost savings for me. So the white CX500 I recently built, I use these same mirrors on the bike. Now, I was at a show in Kansas City and uh, you know we're all chit-chatting and stuff. The bike is sitting there on display. Nobody touched it and then all of a sudden it just rolls forward and slams down on its left side. <gasps> you could hear a pin drop. Actually, the, the thing you did hear was, was the mirror dropping because uh, it broke the uh, glass out of it and uh, scratched the mirror pretty good. So that is kind of the reason that I'm going with this is because I did end up removing this mirror from the customer's bike and replacing it with a non scratched up one because I'm a decent human being and I want my customers to be happy. So I have an extra mirror that I saved, you know, it's got a couple scratches on it, whatever, you know, we can rotate this and kind of hide that little area, maybe touch this up a little bit. And so we're saving about 70 bucks or maybe even more on a mirror itself. So these are a little bit hard to find in the US. I know Revival Cycles sells them. I also get these from uh, Toxic Moto Racing and um, they seem to kind of have the best price on it. You know, I am a little bit cheap sometimes, but uh, the mounting system that is going to come from Revival along with the handlebars that I bought. And then the grips are coming from somewhere else entirely. So. Um, for now, the mission for today, until I get the rest of the parts, is to go ahead and re-adhere the glass into the mirror, and that way we're ready to put these things on whenever the rest of the parts arrive. And so to mount the glass, I'm just going to go with a JB weld, like a clear weld, and hopefully this stuff will uh, hold it in there permanently. So it's probably going to be a harder bond than what it originally had, because whenever that mirror came off, I was able to just kind of like roll off the rest of the adhesive in here. So ultimately probably going to be a stronger bond. We'll see how it goes. So, so I know some people definitely, you know, love bar end mirrors and some people don't. The annoying part of them is that they do add a little bit of width. So if you're in a small space like this garage, for example, if you're moving back and forth past the bike, man, they're the first thing to catch on your jacket or your shirt or anything that you're doing. So um, a lot of times what you'll have is like a cheaper bar end mirror. If you touch it, they just kind of get all out of whack. These things stay put. They are once you kind of tighten them down, they're on there really good. Like, of course you can move them if you hit them hard enough, but these things do stay in place really well. So it's another reason I like them. But let me go ahead and open up the JB Weld. We'll get everything cleaned up. We'll get this glass set in there.
Yeah, luckily the glass did not break. There is a little line right there. I think I can just flip it over and use this clean side. Should be good. Let's see. Okay, I'm glad that I just looked at the mirror because one side is like concave, so it explodes the view. Let's see if I can get that. Versus the other side, which is more flat. So, oh, and actually that's a little bit more transparent right there. So, now we know. That would have been a weird mistake to make. Like, whoa, in my face. Okay, now we got the side. It's all right to be a little bitty. Shout out to Alan Jackson. Okay. Easy enough. Double check our side of the mirror. Let it dry like that. That's epoxy I've already got on here or what? Okay, we're good. All right, we've got the bandit here and it has been probably a week since the last clip. I've just been waiting on my package here. So we finally have the bars and then the necessary components to actually mount the mirrors. So let's go ahead and open this thing up and we will get started on this and just finish this job. Just finish this job. Just finish this job. Also, you'll have to excuse uh, maybe a little bit of background noise. I had a tree come down in a recent storm, so they're out there uh, actually grinding it. So, exciting stuff. LSL brand bars, and this is their tracker bend, so we'll see how they feel on the Bandit. I do have another set um, actually in the box for another bike build that's coming up, but uh, we'll see how these things fit. So we'll compare the dimensions, but it's got the right amount of pullback to it, and uh, you know, I like a wider bar, so these things should be nice. But made in Germany, they're just nice bars. So to pair with that, we have the actual uh, Oberon brand bar end mounts. So these things, you actually clamp the mirror straight to that, and then they have their, uh, you know, their own kind of wedge. So these things are pretty trick. Yeah. Let's get everything on the bench. Start installing. All right. Well, we have all of our stuff here, but already I've encountered an issue. Now, obviously, there's two different colors here. So I wanted the black one, but they only had one of them. So we had to order the silver or the uh, kind of natural finish. But I do not see a way of this actually expanding this little collet here to make it, you know, kind of go into the handlebars. So there's a wedge on the inside. And then right here, it's just kind of flat on the end. Whereas this one actually has a machine surface right there that taper on the end what that does is force its way into the center of that which expands out those little uh, collets there to make it grip inside the bar so kind of kind of disappointed here this doesn't have I don't know how this would work and and obviously with this piece on the end that would also lock it rotation wise to the piece that's clamped to the bar, whereas this, there's there's nothing holding it there. So 
Um, trying to figure out what I got to do here. Is this even worth? I was gonna. I was planning on painting this thing, and uh, I now I don't really know what to do now. So um, I might have to completely try to duplicate one of these on my own. Luckily, I do have a lathe, but I didn't want to have to take the time to lathe something up. But I at least have a dummy piece to uh, copy the dimensions off of. And what really sucks is uh, I think I think these come from like Germany or something like that, or the, they come from the UK. And I have a hard time finding a source for these things that's actually US based. I could not find these bar ends anywhere. Like the mirror mounts, couldn't find them anywhere. So pretty unfortunate here. We're in a bit of a pickle. Well, I'm even more disappointed right now so um, just trying to think about how to do this and looking at this thing I just tried to kind of put it in the handlebar you can see it's kind of compressed on the end there and that will not fit like it, it absolutely will not fit so in this bar here is actually very thin so some of like your Renthals and stuff like that or pro tapers they have a thicker uh, aluminum build to them so there's no way these would fit so what I'm going to have to do is uh, I'm going to have to like probably expand this one back out and then chuck it in the lathe and then also chuck this one in the lathe, turn it down. And then for this thing, I, I guess what I'll have to do is I don't have any aluminum that's this diameter, so I can't make the entire piece. So what, I, what I'm thinking is I will make the end here. I'll duplicate this piece weld it on and then just machine it back so hopefully that'll be strong enough but i can at least do that but that's a whole lot of work for uh you know a, you know unfortunately it was supposed to be like a bolt-on part but you can see how these things are supposed to work you have a tiny little set screw right there that these slide over that's your bar end and then this is your mirror mount and then from there the mirrors are clamped in there so it's it's a really you know it's a nice system like this side would be no problem but of course now we just I'm not sure how this was supposed to work at all I had an idea of maybe making just a single uh, detached piece and then using a kind of ground washer you know like a serrated washer to make it grip so it wouldn't turn but that just seems like kind of a hack fix so I think we're going to have to really dig into the lathe and uh, get creative here and also do some welding. And luckily I have a TIG, I can weld aluminum, but that's still a heck of a lot of work. Alright, first order of business is I have started modifying these little collets. So this area right here, I took this down from about 22 to right at 19 mil. So once it starts expanding, or once it starts actually compressing a little bit, this does barely fit into the bar so that's going to be a nice tension fit and then once i kind of build the other end that's uh, going to be like the wedge to expand this thing outward it should lock in place really well so this one i'm going to go chuck it up in the lathe and then we will take it down about the uh what did i say about three mil now so you can see the difference there pretty drastic difference if you ask me all right let's get to it pieces are modified now we get to work on that so I had to duplicate this end on here we got to get the welder out do all kinds of stuff okay now studying the issue that we have here if I was to duplicate this end in the lathe and try to weld it onto here you're dealing with such a small area 
the time spent making this, it would probably just be easier to uh, kind of clean this up and then just build it up with weld and then just machine it back down. That way it's all one piece and I'm not trying to attach two pieces where I could have, you know, potentially a break point right here. So this is going to be kind of a high stress area. So I think that's what we're going to have to do is just simply just weld it, you know, just build it up. It'll look like garbage for a second, but then we can clean it back up. So we'll end up probably having to, uh, you know, we'll chuck it up somehow. If I have to maybe make something to attach there, then we'll bolt it there. I'm, I'm not sure how it'll work. You know, maybe lock a nut in there. I don't know. We'll figure it out, but I think that's what we're going to have to do is uh, dust off the TIG and start doing some welding. All right, I'm all set up. Got my AC set up here. And uh, we'll start off on 100 amps, see how that goes. Now, if I all of a sudden switch to music in this video, that's because my TIG has an EMP pulse that uh, normally kills my audio right when I start. So sometimes I get lucky, sometimes I don't. Let's give it a shot. Not like that. The whole thing just started to collapse on me. I'm thinking it was anodized. I tried to test it, but I didn't know. She's a little goobered up. At first we got a lot of extra heat in that, so kind of melted her down. Unfortunately, but we can fix it. So, it's like a high quality piece, huh? You guys want me to do any welding for you? So, anyway, first job will be to uh, kind of chuck it up by the actual lip here, and then go ahead and turn down this section. That way we have it all kind of squared up, and then from there we can work on making some kind of jig to do the end. But I was definitely uh, hoping it would have gone a little smoother than that, to say the least. But whatever. Aluminum I typically struggle with, and I do think this might have had an anodizing on it, and that was the issue. Alright, it took me a hot second to chuck this thing up. But I think we'll be okay. So I can at least turn down that surface right there, and then we'll work on the rest of it. So it looks like I still need to add a little bit right here on that edge. But then you kind of run the risk of uh, getting it out of square. What to do? All right, as of now, I have this thing to the correct overall length. And I think what I'll be able to do is actually, instead of flipping this thing over, reclamping it here to drill our center, I might be able to just get the center going from... Uh, from this side, and then I can use a live center and then kind of work on cutting this area down with a little bit more stability, and I don't have to risk getting this thing out of round. I'll 
So sorry for the shakiness. One of the goals that I have with the new place is actually to um, have a dedicated camera mount for the lathe. just enough like I could probably weld a little bit right there but we may have just enough all right well we got really close dimensionally to this without uh, having to add more weld but we're gonna have to do it so right there on the edge up here you can see we need to add a little bit that spot probably wouldn't matter but we do need to go ahead and get this section filled in here because we need to actually put a taper in that so that needs to be a little bit more specific to expand the wedge so I did just go ahead and at least attempt to get this thing lined back up and hopefully have it squared up in here so we'll give it a shot Voila! One must first goober before they can ungoober. All right, back to the lathe. All right, final operation. Got this thing chucked up and it uh, was in the right spot. Not the most excellent surface finish, but you know what? It'll be all right. So there you go. Identical pieces. Definitely happy to take off. These things are heavy. So if anybody familiar with bandits knows of a on the carb uh, choke conversion instead of having it on the bar, I would be interested. So maybe let me know in the comments if you know of one. I'm sure I could probably just use a linkage off an earlier carburetor setup.
little grip glue. Okay. Just had to get that piece off. Now these things actually do have a uh, pin in them. You can see there's a hole in the bar. Well, you can't see it, but there's a hole in the bar, so that's going to locate your controls. So we will have to duplicate that on the new bars. Sometimes we can get lucky when you tap this in, undoes the wedge, you can kind of pull them out, but we'll see. Not so much the case. We're going to chuck this thing up in the lathe, take that off and take that off. Because we're gonna get it's a Honda CX500 axle with uh, some other interesting add-ons. I use this to uh, polish my speedometer drive deletes. All right, time for the grips. inch these say they're black I don't know as you saw we machined this thing down so I just took away this section here so we have something to kind of bottom out against and this should be it so all right these are pretty pretty tight. I think what we're going to do is use some brake clean on these. Oh my. 
my. On there. Sweet. Put, hop up on this thing. All right. Now we got to talk about these bars. So we have slightly more rise in the bar. We actually have slightly more pullback, and maybe I don't know. I really like tracker bars. These are extremely comfortable, but I don't know if they're the right exact bar for this bike. So I know the original bars, I, I just, they're not wide enough for me. I like maybe about inch wider. So now these are in fact now too wide. So we got a dilemma here. I almost feel bad, but we're gonna have to cut these things down. Probably do it about an inch and a quarter on either side. And we'll see how that goes. We can always trim them down a little bit farther, but I don't know. We're definitely putting them on. Let's see how it fits. But yeah, I like a little bit more pullback. I don't like a straight bar or anything like that. And I like a little bit of rise. So these again on a vintage bike, I've used a bend very similar to these on multiple vintage bikes and oh, they're so great, but it's going to be kind of sacrilegious to cut these things down. So we'll go ahead and confirm that all of the controls are going to fit, you know, because our, our, uh, our bend right here is further out. So that naturally moves the uh, controls out, obviously, with the end of the bar. So for measurement's sake. Now, the original bars are right at 27 and a half wide, whereas these things, let me see if I can do this one handed with one hand on the camera. We're looking at 33 inches. Insanity. So that's what I'm thinking. Maybe trim them down about one and a quarter on either side, and that would give us about an inch more than we had in the beginning. And I think we'll be happy there. Well, this has turned into kind of a shit show set of handlebars it should be easy right all right so mocking up the left side here this is about as far out as i can get the actual clutch master so our line we have enough slack we have a rotation it's fine but on our brake side i can't even get it to the bar so i need at least probably another inch on that front line so not that you can't fix that issue but my issue is that all my brake stuff is in that box right there. My ladder usually goes right there. Hmm, we gotta figure this out. All right, lifted up the lift, stood up there, got the box, got my brake stuff out. Here's a wrap. So, I have actually enough components to make a new front line. So I have some Goodrich Shadow stuff left over from previous builds. I have two straight fittings, but unfortunately the line is now too long. So that would make it like looped all crazy and stuff. So not a good option. Now I have one more set of bars. They're actually also LSLs, but they're more of a super bike bend. So they're a lot lower. They're still um, a good bit wide, but the bend is going to be closer, so that's going to allow us, you know, placement we need most likely. The thing is, they're made of aluminum. Now, the ends of the bars are very thick, which means we wouldn't be using these, which we literally just spent like all day on. Um, so there's that. Guys, I do this stuff for a living. 
and a set of handlebars. Like just a basic handlebar swap is gonna break me. I don't know how. I was debating today, putting my attention on this chopper here I got last night. I'm kinda regretting my decision to work on the bandit. I really don't want to put the stock bars back on this. So damn. That sucks. You know, some days things just go side. I just set up the. I just walked in, brought the bars home, and I was gonna be like, oh, you know, some days things just go sideways. Hadn't noticed that. All that stuff fell over. This is gonna be the longest bar swap video ever. A few moments later. Okay, now we have that cleaned up. Now we can get back to talking about how the day has gone sideways. Anyway, these bars, I don't feel like putting a new brake line on here and re-bleeding stuff, so I think what we're gonna do, I've had these bars for a long time. And LSL brand, they are aluminum. These are nice freaking bars. So they have about the perfect width to them a little bit less pullback. It's a little bit more of a super bike bend. I would like a little bit more of a, uh, a rise to them, but you know what? We gotta get this thing done. So the only issue here, non-issue, issue, whatever, they are aluminum, so the ends are thicker, which means our inserts will not fit. Now, we could do two things here. I could try to simply open them up and drill them kind of a hack fix if you ask me uh, I'm not sure how much meat I can really take off of these things though that would be the next step I mean I'd have to knock off uh, it, that wouldn't work it, it would be too much material missing so really really unsure here the whole, the whole idea with this was to use these sweet bar ends to mount the mirrors on and stuff and have a really, really clean look. But I think what we're going to have to do is forgo the whole thing I've been waiting on and just use the actual bar end like that along with just a basic plug. I've got a few of them, so really disappointed <laughs> to say the least. But I just got to get this thing done. At the end of the day, we'll have an even, even higher quality bar that's made of aluminum and we'll still have the look we want, but we will have wasted a bunch of time. So I can always swap them in the future. I will still have these bar ends now that I've got the other one painted and everything. Just a good experiment in time wasting, I guess. But man. I do apologize, this video is gonna be long, but you know what, it is what it is. This is what I go through every day. So, laugh at my pain. The pain you have to suffer through is sitting on your couch or at your desk watching this video and maybe having to get up and get another drink. So, I'm rambling on. I'm gonna go ahead and just swap these things out and uh, we'll just we'll keep going. Okay, as a comparison to the new, new bars, which are old, whatever, here is what we're looking at. So we have our stock width bandit bars at like 27 and a half, and then these are right at 30 inches. So that would give me about an inch gain on either side, which is exactly what I want with the actual mount on top of the end of the bar. Now, I do have a 5 8 inch drill bit. I could get wild and try to drill the end out, do some more modifications on this, and uh, hopefully, it, hopefully it would work, but uh, I don't know if I want to. I really don't. But that would give me like probably another inch and a quarter. So I don't know. I think we'll just have to. We'll just kind of throw in the towel for this one and save these for an actual, you know, steel bar. We still have the tracker bars. So this is probably just the best way right now. We'll make it look good, but man, again, this whole day just went sideways. feel defeated. They ask you how you are, you don't just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just...
see the difference here in these bars. Okay. And pull the throttle off and then we will change the grip on that side start building it back and then we will have to actually uh, drill for the pins okay still need to drill for our pins but we have to mock it up We're having a hell of a time today, guys. So as of right there, that's where our bar end mirror would go. Go ahead and put a set screw in this. That'll help hold the tension on it. That should be our mark. From there we can drill a dimple to fit that little pin. My drills are at the other building. One eternity later. Perfect. Okay. It good.
Now on this side, we actually have to go ahead and put on the grip and that way we can only then see where we need to drill. So everything lines up from the outside. So now we clean up the bar, we'll put the grip on and we'll be that much closer. We have that located where it needs to be. So now we can drill our hole for here. Now, I had to remember to put the sleeve on first. And then of course, our Renthal is clocked the exact same as the other side, which is important. Just for mock up here. I double checked. It would have been a little bit too far to the outside. Perfect. Nice tension fit. Alright, so this is the locking screw for the actual mirror mount. A little bit of blue Loctite on there. Okay, time to actually mount the mirrors up. You can see here there's a little recess in this area. It comes with these brass bushings. Those slide in there like that. There's one per side. And then what you do, set this thing carefully in the recess. You get it a little bit cinched down, then you can kind of adjust your front back. And then once you have your kind of front back orientation, you can uh, take this back off. And what I recommend is actually taking out that set screw and then just drilling a 
teeny tiny little divot into the end of the bar and that'll help lock it in. That's just kind of my two cents on that one, but uh, yeah, we got this one glued up as you guys saw. So a little, a little boo-boo on that. Not a big deal though. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing attached and we will get them on the bars. Well, that was realistically the longest handlebar swap in the history of man, in the history of motorcycles, perhaps. But I absolutely love the combination that we ended up with. Of course, I would have wanted to use the parts that I bought, but uh, you know what, it didn't work out. So we lost a, quite a bit of time on this whole job. And I went with bars that I ended up having for like the last year and a half, probably. And then, um, yeah, could have had this done like a week ago. So overall, they do fit great. I just had to uh, kind of crack the brake line and the clutch line loose. Just rotate them like real quick, just that way, and then tighten it back up. No issues there. Uh, I just went for a quick ride on this thing, so got those uh, nice montage shots for you. But looks good. I like the visibility of the mirrors. I'll have to see what these things are like on the highway, as far as you know, vibration and also vibration in the mirrors. But you know, I don't think it's going to be too bad. But the width is perfect, so. I'll likely get these bars again just to replace them because I do plan to use them on an upcoming GS550 build. Then we're going to put a Katana 750 engine in and some good suspension and stuff. So that's going to be a cool upcoming build. But yeah, I am obviously in love with this bike. I love the way it looks. Just going to make a few more tweaks. You know, we're going to have this thing for a long time so we don't have any kind of rush. But I'm gonna wrap it up. I hope you guys liked this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions and I will be sure to link everything used and not used in the description. So be sure to check there if you guys uh, are interested in anything that I have. So again, I'm gonna wrap it up. Hope you guys like this one and hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.